Now, how many people here grew up with Bumblebee? Let's bring him out now, the man who's gonna take us all back to 1987. He's got the touch and an Academy Award nomination, Travis Knight. I was a child of the 80s, so I grew up loving that, that first wave of Transformers. And for me, the first, I thought it was magical. I thought it was wondrous. I'd never seen anything like it. And so for me, you know, with a smaller cast, knowing there was going to be some high-octane action sequences where we have these robots smashing into each other, I wanted to make sure that at a glance, every single one of them, you could tell who they were. Every single one of them had to have its own unique silhouette, its own unique color scheme, so you always knew what was going on on screen. And so with Bumblebee, he's our hero. You know, we're not, we didn't start with a blank canvas. We have 10 years of films that come before this, this film. But because it's set 20 years prior, uh, it gave us some liberty to harken back to that original wave of G1 designs, which I absolutely adore. What skills from your previous work were useful here, and what kind of stuff did you have to, to learn? in order to take this uh, project on. There is a huge component on any one of these big visual effects films that is animation. I think people don't think about it. They think, oh, it's visual effects, but no, it's animation. Bumblebee is an animated character. Um, and so I approached our animators like you would approach actors because that's what they are. Bumblebee has, has to give a performance that's as believable, as authentic, and as, as moving as Haley Steinfeld. So approaching it from that prism, really making him feel like an emotional creature, I do think it allows the, the, the audience to attach more meaningfully to this character and hopefully forge a more emotional connection with him. It's an origin story. We find out who he was before he met, uh, he met us uh, and then his experience, why he becomes the character he becomes because of this journey that he goes on over the course of the film. And we really are, are, uh, give us an opportunity to take a deep dive into this character and understand what he's about. And it's, it's, a, it's a way of looking at Transformers that I don't think we have before. For fans of the series, you, don't, you can come into this film not knowing anything about the Transformers and still enjoy it, but for fans of the, of the franchise, the stories, the comic books, the toys, there are all manner of layers in this film that people can enjoy. And so as a, someone who grew up loving these things, it was, it was a field day. It was, it, I felt like I was a kid who was playing with my toys just on a big stage. Haley Steinfeld plays Charlie Watson, kind of the young gearhead who discovers this rusty old VW bug. and George Lendeborg Jr., who plays her pal, Memo. We meet Charlie, uh, Charlie Watson, as uh, your sort of typical misunderstood teenager, and um, she has experienced a major loss in her life, and she's constantly trying to basically find that freedom that she craves and fill that gap of, of loss with love or friendship or someone that understands her and sees her. Um, and like I said before, she's craving this sense of freedom and, and she sees that within a car that works. And she goes on this journey of finding that car and makes this unbelievable discovery that uh, this car she ends up finding is not only a car. Um, and then this beautiful journey of, of her and Bumblebee sort of begins. Memo is, uh, <laughs> I'm new to the neighborhood uh, that Haley's character, Charlie, lives in. Uh, I think she's kind of cute, and I'm vying for her attention, and <laughs> that kind of leads me into this great big Bumblebee adventure. I think she's a, a beautiful person, and I, I try to see uh, Charlie for who she is. Uh, Memo really speaks to, like, the inner geek within us all, you know, the things that people might not think are cool, but you know that, that they mean something, and you know that they're special, and those are the same likes that I think Memo has. This is a character that is finding who she is and what her place is in this world, and finding her voice, so to speak, and so is Bumblebee. Um, and they do that together, and it really is this beautiful story that just unfolds of, of friendship and heartfelt emotions. And one thing that was incredibly important to me and Travis was making sure that Charlie had that, that the relationship Charlie had with Bumblebee meant something and that it was exciting and emotional and everything, everything you want it to be. And um, that all sort of falls into their coming of age. Yeah. I think we should have the whole room, like 7,000 people say that name all at once. You ready? One, two, three, John Cena! <laughs> yeah, but then 7,000 people are also going like, yeah, but nobody's up there. I can't see anybody. <laughs>
But thank you for making me invisible and including me in this wonderful, wonderful panel. Hello, everyone! Oh, man, I just got really excited real quick. That's how it goes with me, though. That's ah, a story for another time, whatever. All right, great. So, what's going on? All right, John, you, you fought some big guys in your time. Uh, you're going up against shape-shifting alien robots this time. Yeah, what totally makes qualified to do that. <laughs> what makes Agent Burns an antagonist? He's, he's some, he thinks he's a good guy, right? Yeah, uh, this, is, this is where it gets awkward. Because <laughs> I've been sworn to secrecy, uh, and I'm not supposed to talk about stuff, but I see all these people out here, and I want to explain myself and why I think I'm right. I'll just say that Agent Burns knows that he's right, and that's the reason why he does sometimes the naughty things that he does. <laughs> he's trying to do something that she disagrees with and doesn't like and isn't happy with, so of course she's gonna do whatever she can to stop him. Yeah, but we all know that Charlie's like stuck in her ways and stubborn and an adolescent. He doesn't know a lot about life and a guy with more life experience can be like, hey, I've been through what you're going through and I'm kind of trying to teach you lessons and stuff and you're doing it wrong. But I mean, what else? What else, he said. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I love about John's character is that he's, he's gray. It's, uh, you know, he actually believes he's right, and from some perspective, he's absolutely right. Look, if you follow the trajectory of the Transformers films, the Earth is not a great place in uh, 2017 as is, as because of the Transformers' involvement with our affairs. And so he's not wrong. Uh, just, you know, it's just a way of looking at the world, and I think that makes for an interesting villain. Do you want to see some footage? This yes. is Comic Con! Sell the footage! Sell so so the footage! Sell the footage! Sell the footage! Do you expect to star in more movies after this, John? Uh. <laughs> 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 that, the pressure is on, jeez. Well, the answer to that question kind of depends on you. Uh, <laughs> If, if you enjoy the movie, and I think continuously scream at the top of your lungs, John Cena, <laughs> then people will kind of want to be able to put me in more movies, so I, I, that would be cool if that happened. <laughs> but if it doesn't, that's also okay, because I can still go back to being John Cena. You'll always be John Cena. I've had a wonderfully successful career in the WWE, yeah. and I, I, I uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, and I pride myself on, on on kind of my, my character there, and I know that that's uh, probably not gonna evolve past being a good guy. Like, I don't know if I'll ever be a bad guy in the WWE. Um, so it was in extremely inviting to be, um, kind of kind of be gray uh, in Bumblebee and believe that what I was doing is right, but be, uh, be essentially a bad guy. So you guys will get to, I guess, all those um, WWE folks who are looking to see a heel John Cena, and the, that's inside baseball, a bad guy John Cena. <laughs> we'll be able to kind of get a glimpse of that for Bumblebee. So I was, I'm really excited about it. A lot of people don't necessarily appreciate that when you see an, an actor on screen with something that was generated in a computer, it's just ones and zeros, that in the moment, there's nothing there. And so Haley has to give a, a very believable performance with something that she can't even see and imagine what it could be. Now for me, from an animator's point of view, it's all in my head. I see everything that's happening. I see Haley and I see a robot there, you know, interacting with her. But for, you know, for, for an actor, I mean, it has to be an authentic, believable, emotional performance for us all to buy into it. And so I think it really is a testament to Haley's talent and the talent of the rest of our cast that they were able to kind of buy into this idea that there is this emotional creature in front of them when, where none existed. I think Bumblebee will surprise people because in the previous films, we've seen Bumblebee as, you know, something of a warrior and he's great, he's great at fighting. But it, it, one of the things I'm most proud of in this film is how believable and emotional and authentic he is in the film. So that comes down to our animators who actually bring him to life. But back when I was a kid, <laughs> to have a toy change into another toy truly was more than meets the eye. Like it was absolutely amazing. So to be a kid and to see this thing that you could only imagine be real and then you could be creative with this thing and then change it into something else and be creative with it again, I absolutely loved getting two toys when I got one toy. <laughs> and I think, uh, well, um, there's another I question think, there. But wait I think we have one more question, actually. Yeah, okay. how, excuse me, young man, how old are you? People of Hall H. Woo! 
I have a question. So <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Peter Cullen, Optimus Prime, <laughs> going way, way back. <laughs> Peter, what's your question? Travis Knight. Uh -oh. My name is Optimus Prime. <laughs> I could not help but notice my absence in much of your footage. Well, <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure there's a question, Norik, there. It's uh, not really a question, in fairness. Uh, <laughs> the movie's called Bumblebee. It's about Bumblebee, so it's really his moment in the sun, uh, Mr. Cohen. Well, in that case, what does an Autobot have to do to get his own movie? It's <laughs> <laughs> a fair question. It's a fair question. Fair question, fair question. Tough but fair. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe uh, we could showcase your emotional range. Why don't, why don't you show us... Uh, I don't know, joyful exuberance. <laughs> Rightfully so. I am elated to be here. <laughs> All right, I'm sold. I'm sold. 